Okay. Okay. Eric, my friend, you are up first. So whenever you are ready, you may go. Hello, everybody. My name is Eric Neal. I have a background in transportation for roughly eight years. Uh, during that eight years, I was also a mentor. What that was, it consists of DOT regulations, accident preventions, simple mechanical repair, as well as driving. Basically, I was showing them how to do it the swift way for swift transportation. Although it was beneficial for me uh, financially, I wasn't home uh, maybe about three days a month uh, because I wanted to be out and catching the loads depending on where it was in the country. Uh, I had recently got married in the beginning of 2021. So I wanted to take a step back and reflect on my career path. Uh, being home three days a month and eventually having a pregnant wife, I figured it wasn't gonna work. I knew that it wasn't gonna work, but my fiance was so understanding. She never said anything about it, but me personally, I needed to make a change. So in the beginning of 2021, my contract for the company had ended. I didn't want to renew it or start a new contract with another company because of the time away from home. So I decided to look for a new career path. Savvy Coders was suggested to me by a friend at my jiu-jitsu school. He was a specialist in computer science and he also showed me a couple of things online that I could do for free before I really uh, dove into my new adventure. Once I did a couple of things online for free, I came back to him and I told him that I really do like computer programming. I always liked computers, but I never had the time to take four years out and actually learn the subject. He told me that there was a couple of boot camps available and gave me a list. Savvy Codis was one of the lists. And he told me, especially like, look into these guys because they have a great ratio of student to TA. And along with the TAs, they also have students, I mean, teachers available to teach you and help you through your problems if you have any. Uh, so I talked to Des. Uh, she is a recruiter for Savvy Coders. She told me the ins and outs and told me that it was going to be a struggle and you needed to work hard. And hard work wasn't something that was, uh, isn't something that I'm new to. So I decided to go with Savvy Coders and I'm glad I did. As a Savvy Coder student, they have a capstone project. Please let me show you my capstone project. Okay, before I show you my capstone project, this was my wireframe and I knew I wanted to call it Get a Grip. I was settled on a couple of logos and a couple of things that I wanted the project to do. After talking to Stephanie for about a week, we decided we were gonna dial back on a couple of things and add more details to things. So I knew I wanted it to be a news article with detail of the title with a description of what it was gonna be a photo or a video of what was going to be in the content and a place where you can chat and talk about whether or not uh, you are in agreement or disagreement of the subject, somewhere where there was going to be a public, uh, popular place, you know, something that was trending and so on and so forth. So after talking to Stephanie about it, she said, okay, you have some great ideas, but I want you to dial it back. I want you to be able to complete your capstone project. And since she was in charge of Scrum and Agile and getting work uh, completed within the time zone, I trusted her and I'm glad I did. So she introduced to us the Trello board. The Trello board was for our personal organization. We wanted to make sure that we were able to get things from planning stage and I also have a couple other things that I want to implicate into my capstone but we wanted to make sure that we could get things from planning stage to the backlog to ready for development to in progress and so on and so forth until it got to the complete stage where I have most of my stuff. Uh, 
the Trello board was extremely helpful, especially for somebody who is uh, task oriented, uh, which was me. So I was especially uh, how like thankful for the Trello board and introducing it to, uh, to me from Stephanie. Later on, she showed us the backlog, and this is when she implicated that we were going to do a project, which was we were going to be our own scrum. We were going to have somebody be our scrum master and a scrum owner, a product owner. So once I volunteer for the role of product owner, I looked into what was responsible of the product owner. So the product owner was responsible for the completion of each scrum or each sprint. So I wanted to make sure that the sprint was something that we can all agree on, something that we were all able to achieve at the end of the two weeks and something that was beneficial for us. So I chose the curriculum and the homework. So I knew if we were moving along in the curriculum, if we nobody fell behind in the curriculum, that we were going to reach our goal and completing a wonderful capstone and developing our skills as developers. So I chose mainly the stuff that was already in the curriculum and the homework, and I just broke it down to things that were simple and easy to do individually. So with the help of the Scrum Master. And my Scrum Master in the team was Shaquilla. So me and Shaquilla and Michael halfway through, Michael helped as well as a Scrum Master and working between both parties to make sure that we were doing it all together, the whole team was. So at the end of the cohorts, we, I wanted to make a sprint that was able to get to the demo day. So I implicated most of my uh, sprint was for the cast on. So if anybody had a question or anything like that, we would have a meeting or a study hall, we called it, for anybody falling behind or anybody who had questions. Sometimes it was me. Anybody who had questions, and if somebody in the scrum team could, wasn't able to handle it, we would make sure that we reached out to a TA or a teacher so that the problem was solved. It was extremely helpful. It got uh, me to the finish line, and I am very thankful for it. Here is my site, and it's called Get a Grip. And right here, I have three pages in my single page application, and it's gallery, home, and form. Underneath that, I have a couple of social medias that relate to the topic. So right here for Facebook, we have Jiu-Jitsu. For Instagram, we have Karate. I didn't want to make it one subject because basically what we want to do is reach out as many people who feel included into the subject as possible. So I wanted to reach out to as many uh, different groups of people as possible. And right here for Twitter, we have mixed martial arts. And also I have my GitHub. So if anybody is into development or into coding, they can look at my form and actually take a look through the code and see how the inside is and out were done, the front end and back end. I also have a discourse for people who like to use discourse as a conversation. So beneath that, beneath that, I have a fight even on your worst day, then fight some more. It is a, a saying that I like to say, uh, words to live by basically what I like to say because a lot of times uh, I grew up and my mom will always say today isn't a bad day today is a character building day so even on your bad days you have to be you have to have something within to make force yourself to develop even more 
And on those days when you actually go through it and do what you need to, you look back on it and you say, wow, that was a really important day in my life where I worked and got something accomplished. So on the page, I have topic starters. So these are, this is mainly for people who are new to the site or new to the subject matter. So for the first part, I have Jake Paul versus Tyrone Woodley. And Jake Paul is a YouTuber and a NBA player who was a former MMA mixed martial arts champion. That would be Tyrone Woodley, a mixed martial arts champion. And they are going to fight and it's bringing in huge numbers. I suggest anybody to uh, look it up and decide whether or not they want to buy the pay-per-view for it. Uh, Tyrone Woodley, I thought he was uh, notice noticeably mentioned because he is a St. Louis native. Uh, a lot of people uh, in the St. Charles gym, uh, St. Charles MMA, mixed martial arts, know him personally. He's been there a long time. Uh, nobody, everybody has nothing but good things to say about him. Uh, I'm rooting for him in the fight, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, so we click on to, and this is, the title is also a link. It's a link that goes to a page on YouTube. So you can click on to the link and it will send you to a page if you feel like you want to know more about the subject. Right here, I have a utility function right here, and it updates every day. So every day that I put up an update, it will tell you the day that it was updated. And this goes on for several articles. And I also have on the side here, red, white, and blue for the 4th of July. We go to the gallery page. The gallery page is a list of GOATs greatest of all times that I think are honorably mentioned on the website. We have here Muhammad Ali. We have his wins, his losses, and amount of knockouts, his accomplishments while he was in the sport. And a fun fact about him, he started at the tender age of 12 when his bike got stolen. Uh, it's just something to know about him. It's an uh, interesting fact about him. Below that, we have Sugar Ray Robinson. Sugar Ray Robinson has a much a, a spectacle of a record. And between that, his accomplishments are just astronomical and so on and so forth. And he has a uh, fun fact about him. Everybody thought of him as a flamboyant guy because he had a pink convertible um, car when he was in New York. Uh, you go down lower and it just keeps going like that. And I go through most of the mainstream mixed martial arts. So we have wrestling here, jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai and kickboxing. So on the forum page, and it just, I'm welcoming people to the forum page and this is where you leave a comment. So you could go here, you could say conversation piece if you have a new subject that you want to talk about, or you can go to GOATS and talk about the GOATS, whether or not you want to put up a new GOAT and you want to, uh, everybody to vote on somebody else being suggested up there. You can go to the topic starters that were on the homepage and talk about one of the conversations that was brought up on the homepage. On the left here, I have the form. And if you just type in, let's say, Eric Neal from Savvy Coders, go down to this part. I enjoyed my time at Savvy coders. Ooh. Excuse me. And then scroll down to the submit button and press submit. You can see the comment right here. Eric Neal from Savvy Coders, topics, starters, uh, content. I enjoy my time with Savvy Coders. 
So that was a lot of my work on the back end. I had a little bit of back end work on my homepage with the calling back of the date, and this would do it automatically. But that was most of my work on the back end was getting the form set and getting the database set up where I can send information to the database and then pull the information from the database so it could go to the form right here. And beneath that, I have a conversation piece, whether or not, because I don't want people to think that mixed martial arts and uh, anything of the sort is barbaric or, or brutal or stuff like that, because it's not. And when people do it the right way, it is just uh, something that is inspiring, something motivational and on that level. So I have two, these pictures are also links and it shows you the worst sportsmanship moments. And it's really cringe when you see somebody with no sportsmanship versus somebody who does uh, implement sportsmanship into you know who they are and this is just uh, uh, a little conversation piece that i put released beneath the form so that people can just bring it up in conversation so let me show you a little bit of the back end so on the back end we use nullify and for this you can type this in right here and it is fully functional on the actual web. Also, right here would be a few of the codes. So this would be my database right here. And this would be how the information is being. So I put everything into an array and this would be the user, the form user, the category and the content. And in this array is basically what you saw on the actual page. So this array is what it would look like in code. And I take this array out of this and I simplify into this temporal literal. So it would be with it in between these two are. And I send that to my actual HTML so that it would print out and show. A way of stopping because I need to develop a function so that bad words, uh, misconduct, and bullying isn't encouraged on the form. A way I could do that before I set up a, a function to do such a thing is monetizing it manually. So I went on to MongoDB Compass and I can go through here and I can look up like, let's say these words are bad words. It's gibberish, but right now we're gonna consider them bad words. I can delete that and now there's, any, there's no more bad words. So right now, that's what I'm using right now to monetize in that and it will keep everything up to date. So here's Savvy Coders. Also, I would like to show you using the Trello board, what I'm also working on. I am, I want to add a login with email registration, and this will also help people, weigh people from not wanting to use the site inappropriately. And I want to set up a couple APIs where I can locate local gyms in the nearby area with the zip code that's in the planning phases and in the development uh, in the developmental pay phase excuse me create more back-end functions so that would be something of the sort of creating it where users can upload something in the homepage or in the news article side themselves. So if they find something and it's of a good source and it's reliable and it's appropriate, they can upload it themselves 
and also be a part of the uh, topic starters. I want to fix the temper literal. As you can see right here, I have a couple of problems with the temper literal right here because it is not structured the way I want it to. And right now I'm fooling around with syntax because I need the correct syntax for VS Code to recognize it. Um, I did a little bit of research on it, but the syntax I am not 100% sure on. So I'm developing that right now. Also, we have uh, my submit button right here. This is the CSS. And this is it right here. So in position zero, it's going to show this shading. In position five, it showed this shading. So it's a progression as it goes through. And that's what gives it that special effect. Uh, that is it for my capstone. Are there any questions? You did a great job, Eric. Hi, my name's Sally. Um, my background is in business sales and retail management. Um, I also have a bachelor's degree from the University of Missouri in textiles and apparel management. As a child, I held a great interest in um, designing and personalizing websites. I'd always, I've always had an eye for design and detail. I also really enjoy understanding the way things work. Eight months ago, I had a baby and my son has really motivated me to um, not only better myself, but our whole family's future. My best friend, Gianna, is a software engineer for a large company in Ohio. Um, and since she's joined the IT world, she's had nothing but great things to say about it. So after doing some research and speaking with savvy coders, I knew this was the route I wanted to take. So for my capstone project, I made a photography website that showcases um, my photography. Um, it allows for potential customers to request quotes, send me a message, and upload a photo. Um, my website is also coded with JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Um, while creating my capstone project, we worked as an agile team. I wrote user stories for my capstone, capstone project using a Trello board. We also use a JIRA Kanban board for the organization of our curriculum. Um, every evening, our Agile team held a daily stand-up to help different team members with anything they were confused on or needed help with. At the beginning of each sprint, we held a sprint planning meeting. And then at the end of each sprint, we held a sprint retrospective meeting. Um, just things like that. So let me show you my Trello board. Um, so right here is my Trello board. I use this for my capstone project. I have a few features that I didn't really get to yet that I want to kind of implement into my website, just like features that would aren't necessary, but would be fun to add. Um, as I went along, I added things to backlog that I thought I might implement when I was working on it, kind of like mobile design. Um, it works, but everything's not like organized the way I'd like it when, when you're pulling it up on the mobile screen. So that's why that's in the backlog. And then, um, my bugs and then the completed done um, area right here. And then for um, our curriculum, we use a JIRA board. Our JIRA board consisted of um, five sprints. And then we actually created a sprint for our capstone project as well. Um, but over here are, is kind of like our backlog on the left side. This is um, things that some members of our team and myself didn't really understand all the way or didn't feel that were completed all the way or that we just needed help with still. So the that's the backlog. And then over here is what we have as the done done. That's what we called it. it. It could be done, but it was done done once everyone understood what was on that card. 
So let me show you my um, wireframes. So when I began my capstone project, this is how I envisioned it. Um, there's so many different photography websites I, I visited that this is kind of what my idea was, but my end product turned out to be so different. Actually, not completely different, but different. Um, so let me show you my project. So this is my homepage. Um, it tells me you a little bit about what kind of photography I do and a little bit about me. And when we go to my about page, um, this is me, my family, and then who I am. Here's a form that where you could send me a message. You could put your, you put your email in here and then send a message like, oh, hey, I want to book this time. Or if you just have a general question, it'll come to my email. Um, on the experience page, this will tell you when you're booking a session, this is what you will get with your, your session. Um, it gives you a little bit of pricing on here and then below my API call that bas basically collects data from a server, um, calls for the time of sunset. Has anyone else taken photos professionally and like met at a certain at sunset time or been a part of that? No. Okay, well, um, sunset basically is like the best time to take a picture. It like creates the perfect lighting for your picture. So there's no like shadows and like you just kind of look golden. Um, and then my portfolio page. So as I said, I had a baby eight months ago. So most, a lot of my pictures are of him, but I've done photos for um, my best friend's little sister, this is them for their eighth grade social, and then just more here and there. Um, and then this form right here, it allows me or anyone who's using the website to um, add a photo to the gallery without actually going into the code and having to add it manually. So you would just put the URL for the photo in here, and then just put a short description of the photo um, right here and then you'll submit it and it will show up on this page here. We can test it too. So if you just put, let's say Gussie, my son's name is Augusta, so I always call him Gussie. So if we did that and then that extra photo will show up right down there and that's the one, it's right up here. So um, let me show you my code. So up here, so I have a stateful um, project and on my homepage, it's coded with a lot of my, the mo majority of my project is coded in JavaScript, but I have HTML and a lot of CSS. I spent a ton of time in my CSS on my project, um, but I have just some photo calls on here and then a little bit of HTML on my about page. This is a page that has the form for the message on it. So here's my JavaScript for the form. Um, on the exper experience page, this is my API call um, where it calls it. It's actually Java coded down here in my index.js file. And this is all my API right here, my API function. Um, and we can go back up here to the portfolio page. So here's the form that allows for the photo to go in to the portfolio page. So it's this form and it's this form, it's kind of linked together. So this form doesn't actually show up as a link on my page. Um, and then those are called down here. So when you insert the photo into the URL, um, submit on my page, this is where it'll actually end up. So this is the next photo. And um, my CSS is down here. So I've spent so much time just perfecting the CSS, but um, I spent, this is that. And then actually on my page, I do have some calls on here as well for links to um, like my Instagram. 
to get in contact with me, my LinkedIn, and then as well as my Facebook. So there's that. And that's about it. Does anyone have any questions? I don't have any questions, but your little baby boy is absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, you have a great job. Great thank job. You. And your photos are beautiful too. Thank you. <laughs> I know I told her um, that her website is one of the most beautiful and some of those, um, the picture, um, I, I don't know how you say it, but I think that some of those things should be like a picture board with all the colors that you can take to your bedroom or your living room or something because the colors go together so nicely. That was a great job, Sally. Thank you. All right. David, how's your smoke detector? We good? It's good. Oh, now. <laughs> it, it makes me insane. It, it literally 90 seconds into poor Sally's presentation, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> My smoke detector is doing that too. And then silence for like, a minute and a half, and I'm like, oh, now, really? You've got to be kidding me. Two and it's never, it, wait, was that yours just now, or was that mine? No, you were muted. She I said hers was doing it, too. So. I'm doing it, too. So it, <laughs> Are so you serious? Yeah. And it's never the first one you check, either. You always <laughs> think you've got it. It just and started, like, 10 minutes ago. I've taken down two smoke detectors and a carbon monoxide detector now, and I, I'm, I'm not sure I've got it yet. All right. Well, don't worry about it. You just go on with your presentation. Overcoming adversity is what it's all about, right? We got right. this. We're good. <laughs> so, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is David Rodriguez. Uh, I have a really varied background. Uh, I've done, if you looked at my full resume, uh, it would seem like I've done everything for a living at some point. And that is, primarily comes down to two things. One, uh, I am I've never been the kind of person who identifies myself based on my job. You know, there are some people who are, you know, third generation miners, and if the mine ever closed, they'd have no idea who they are anymore. And, you know, there are cops that if they stop being a cop tomorrow and open a diner, they'd be a cop who owns a diner now. Uh, I've never been that person, you know. Uh, for me, it's always just been about what's the next big, exciting opportunity. Um, but the other really important thing for me has always been I need to feel engaged in a job. I, I'm not a go through the motions, nine to five kind of person. I need to feel like I'm challenged, like I'm learning, like I'm growing. Uh, and even if something is frustrating or difficult, uh, I, I still thrive there as long as I feel like I'm moving forward. Uh, so as soon as that, that feeling goes away, as soon as it's about just maintaining the status quo over and over again, rinse and repeat day in and day out, I'm, it's so hard to, to just stay focused anymore. And so I'm always looking for that next big thing. Uh, my most recent, I guess, professional incarnation was helping my sister uh, build her startup, which was, uh, it essentially served as the North American distribution arm for a brand of luxury Italian uh, fitness equipment. And we launched selling that particular product line in October of 2019. And then basically every gym shut their doors about four to five months later, uh, and we had to pivot very hard. Uh, I'm proud to say that we did. We, we came up with a creative solution. We started marketing uh, their outdoor lines to uh, luxury condo and apartment builders and developers. Uh, and we managed in spite of the pandemic and in spite of that timing to end our first fiscal year completely out of debt and with over half a million dollars in sales volume. However, eventually the pandemic finally caught up to us uh, and that pipeline did dry out, building slowed down and almost stopped entirely. Uh, and she was forced to restructure the company and basically take it in a whole new direction and my job was eliminated. No hard feelings there, nothing more she could have possibly done, but it did put me at a point where I was kind of starting over again. And at 39 years old, you know, I'm, I've, I've thrived on change most of my life, but I'm kind of at the point now where I, I thought it might be fun to try something different. Uh, I think the kids are calling it a career. So um, I literally sat down and I Googled, this is so ridiculous, I know, but I literally just Googled what the uh, 20 fastest growing careers over the next 10 years were. 
And I cross-referenced that with a list of the top 10 best paying jobs of 2021 that you could do without a college degree. And the only things that intersected between those two lists were all in the world of development. I said, okay, well, I guess I should probably look into this. So uh, I started playing around with some of the uh, learning modules on Free Code Camp, and I fell hopelessly in love immediately. I really didn't expect to. Um, I knew that I enjoyed working with computers. In, my, in that last role, uh, through necessity, I had to teach myself AutoCAD 2020. I had to teach myself basic 3D rendering, and I loved all of that. Um, but the thing that I fell in love with with coding is that it immediately struck me as kind of, and this is so cheesy, but as kind of uh, the modern equivalent of magic. Like you devote yourself to the pursuit of learning these secret languages that, that kind of dictate how the whole world around us works, right? And most people go through their whole lives using these languages and using the results of these languages and they don't know anything about them. But if you can learn to speak these languages well enough, then anything that you can clearly visualize in enough detail in your mind you can just speak the words into your terminal or VS code or whatever and actually manifest that thing into reality in such a tangible way that total strangers on the other side of the planet can start interacting with this thing unbeknownst to you practically. And, and it can take on a life of its own. It can grow and evolve and, and other people can pick it up and it can become something that you never even dreamed it could be. And that is absolutely mind-blowing to me. And I, I, I am more excited about coding every moment that I'm doing it. Um, so for my capstone, I wanted to kind of combine that new love with uh, some, some former loves of mine. Uh, I was a personal trainer for five years, uh, did a lot of work in, in that field. And so out of that, uh, Any Gym was born. So Any Gym is in the long run, it's not there yet, but in the long run is going to serve as essentially like a sort of Airbnb for fitness spaces. Um, you know, the traditional gym model is you can try the gym for a day, maybe for three days, and then you get a hard sale pitch and you're expected to commit to a year of paying every single month for something, whether you're using it or not. And that's worked for a very long time for gyms, but let's be honest, it's not great for gym users. And there is a huge market out there uh, of people who just don't want to make those kind of commitments. So to be able to take and uh, give gym owners access to that market segment that they have no access to right now, because those people aren't showing up at all to even get that sales pitch because they know the sales pitch is coming. Um, but also to be able to get this huge variety of uh, exercise options to be able to just drop in at a CrossFit gym one week and, and a Gold's gym another week. And uh, for, the, for the gym user, there's, there's a huge value proposition there for both parties. So I really wanted something that uh, could kind of serve to bridge that gap and, and create that opportunity for, for both, that, both ends, so to speak. Um, so this is where any gym is at the moment. Um, I wanna take a step back though and talk about kind of the planning process and how we got here. Because it was a long and winding road, if I'm being honest. So these are my wireframes. Uh, this was kind of the basic template of uh, sort of what kind of features I wanted and where I wanted them. And, uh, you know, I put together user flows to give myself an idea for uh, how I wanted the, the UI UX experience to go. Um, but over the course of time, as you can see, it's evolved quite a bit. Uh, it's, uh, it's drastically different in many ways, but this still forms uh, the foundation of what I actually have to show for all of that work. And it's very cool seeing how something can evolve and still maintain the DNA of where it came from. Part of the reason why that was manageable uh, is because we use phenomenal organizational tools. Uh, so we use both JIRA, Kanban boards, and Trello. And I was really excited when, uh, when we started learning about Agile and they introduced you know, Trello as, as a tool to use Kanban because I have basically been living by Trello cards for the last three years or so. Uh, when I started that role working with my sister, my job was basically wear every hat that she didn't want to wear or didn't, didn't fit her head. Uh, so when you have eight different plates spinning all at once, you learn very quickly some very real things about how organized you are or are not in real life. Um, so I had picked up Trello and basically every day of my life, I only remember three things, make a card, read the card, do the card. That's 
that's it. My, my brain is completely clear of all of their details. Um, so this was very intuitive for me. It was, it was very natural to pick this up. Um, as you can see, I had, you know, details and links and images and all of this stuff stashed away for myself for reference on basically everything. I nerd out very hard on this stuff. Um, but as you can also see, th there is a lot more in the works than virtually has been done so far. Um, I'm proud of where it's at, given that I've, you know, I started from ground zero with no understanding of code at all, and I have all of this to show. Uh, and it is, you know, done, done in regard to the requirements for the capstone, but um, I'm much more excited about where it's going. So in the long run, this is going to have uh, links to social media, obviously, but we'll have logins and tokenization, user authentication. We'll have two different uh, user experience flows based on whether you're a gym owner or a gym user. We'll have dashboards, payment features, calendars all of that stuff. Um, I'll begin by using a Jamstack method and essentially not reinventing the wheel any place where I have the option to avoid doing so um, and utilizing third-party apps and APIs. Um, over the course of time, you know, if, if it takes off the way I'd like it to, we'll be able to start transferring into hard coding that natively. But, um, but thankfully, there are a million apps that do all of those things basically. So it's gonna be very easy to progress from here now that the, the groundwork is laid. Um, the actual agile process was an exciting process and, and it was exciting to get on with that in the first place because uh, it immediately struck me as, this sounds stupid, but the way business just ought to be if a business has the option to be that way. You know, it was about people, not, you know, the product necessarily. It was about the finished product, not, uh, or, you know, it was about the usable product, not getting a whole project done um and it was it was really about putting first things first and that just made absolute sense to me um so i was really excited when they said that we were going to make this cohort basically the first savvy cohort that has applied agile to to their capstone and, and to the process um but we hit it we hit a bit of a stumbling block immediately right out of the gate so i we split into two teams i had the opportunity to serve as from master for my team um and right out of the gate, we realized this almost doesn't even make sense to try to do. Uh, because if you think about it, you know, Agile is an approach toward essentially project management for teams. It's for development where you've got a team of developers, you've got a scrum master, you've got a product owner, you've got stakeholders, and, and everyone is sort of working towards this one goal, right? we were almost in the opposite situation. Like we had a capstone that every single individual person was doing their own separate project. No one's working on anything together. And we've got a curriculum that is already time boxed. It's already, you know, it's going to happen when it's designed to happen at those increments. There's nothing we can do to change that. It's not up to us. So it was almost kind of like, well, how does this even apply? Um, so that was frustrating for a moment or two for a lot of us. Uh, and in the end, I'm really grateful that that was our experience because we didn't have the luxury of being lazy about it and just taking this prescribed method and just mindlessly following the steps. Because if you think about it, that's what waterfall is. <laughs> that's not agile. Agile is supposed to adapt to your organization. Your organization shouldn't have to adapt to agile. So we were forced to actually comb through uh, you know, all of what we were taught and look at, okay, well, which methods work for us, which uh, artifacts make sense based on what we we're doing, uh, what can we alter a little bit so that it does fit, what do we need to just throw away altogether because it really isn't relevant. Um, and when all was said and done, you know, it meant that every sprint retrospective was insanely valuable from a time investment standpoint because we had to look back at our process and fix and change things and alter them and and apply those lessons in the next sprint. Um, and by the end, I'm really proud to say it felt natural. It felt right. It felt smooth. It felt like we had been doing it this way forever. And even the most skeptical among us, even the folks that at the very beginning were like, this is getting shoehorned in here and it doesn't make any sense. Even those folks actually said out loud, like, this feels like what I would imagine a proper dev environment feels like. This makes sense. It fits. This works, uh, and that was that was a really awesome experience. So, that is how we managed to get to here. 
from here, basically. Um, I'll kind of gloss over a few things real quick or breeze by a few things real quick. I do have two different forms in here. Uh, we were introduced to form spring and that's a great shortcut, I think. Uh, but in the case of a contact form, it's perfect because form spring is really just kind of designed to send you the data. It's just designed to basically send you an email that contains that info. And that's what a contact form is supposed to be. For my sign up form, that's going to kind of form the foundation of those user profiles going forward. So I really need to be able to send this data as a JSON basically to uh, a backend database that'll eventually be hosted on MongoDB. So for this one, I wanted to actually hard code it myself, uh, both so I would have complete control over that data and where it was going, but also just kind of prove to myself that I could do that. Um, I didn't want to start out taking the shortcuts if I didn't have to. So everything through here is functional, everything works. Um, I don't have the database set up just yet because uh, I don't have you know, user logins or authentication. I was specifically asked not to bite off that much more than I could chew. Um, but I'm, I'm excited about where that's going. We've got some stuff just kind of better explaining, uh, sort of painting the picture of where any gym is going. Uh, in the help section, we've got a link here that'll basically go back to that uh, contact form. So if a person has issues logging in or whatever, they can contact me. And then this is the beginnings of my API. Right now, it's just hard coded to pull up, you know, five random gyms in the St. Louis area. But this is the Mapbox API. Um, I started out with the Foursquare API. I was, again, this was a situation where I was definitely biting off more than I could chew. Uh, I should have chosen a much simpler API. Uh, Foursquare had awful documentation. So I switched to Mapbox Places API because it had much better documentation. Well, lo and behold, uh, Mapbox gets their places data from Foursquare, womp womp. Uh, so it was still quite a bit to wrestle with. Uh, their GeoJSON objects are insanely massive and complex. Uh, but so it felt really good to finally get these little pin drops showing up where they're supposed to. Uh, and eventually, uh, part of what I what attracted me to Mapbox specifically, though, is that eventually I can actually uh, send that data to a backend database. I can link that database to a custom tile set in Mapbox. Um, and that'll allow me to basically alter details of the of that data so that when a gym actually becomes an any gym gym, I can change the custom map marker uh, to reflect the fact that it's ours. Uh, I can send, yeah, I can add, you know, website addresses and, and all of that good stuff. So it gives me a lot of creative control over not just what the map looks like, but how it's going to function and, and what a little, it'll do on our behalf. So finally, so I realize I've been talking forever. Thanks for bearing with me. Um, just a quick glance at the code. Uh, the search itself, let's see here. So because it is a, a that was where a lot of my, my challenge with the API came in was that all of the documentation is based on the assumption that you're building a standard old fashioned website, that it's all HTML, CSS basically, and that you're just gonna have script tags that contain some uh, JavaScript in there. And we were building a state-driven SPA. So a lot of things are somewhat different when you're going about it that way. So I had to kind of reference things in my views, but, uh, but place them technically in my root index, but I needed uh, to be able to call the scripts from Mapbox in my HTML. And so it became a much more complex process than I'd expected. But uh, again, it's an awesome experience to have gone through all of that. Here's some of the, uh, I guess, rough draft, if you will, of uh, some of the details that are gonna allow me to do those custom markers um, and kind of alter how that, how that actually functions in the end. Um, and just as a small humble brag, as you can see, this is not locally hosted. This is actually live through Netlify. Um, I do have the uh, MongoDB set up and they are linked. So once I actually establish that database, everything should transfer over and, and function just fine. So that is my capstone project. Any questions, anything I can answer? Love to help out. Well, it sounds like there are no technical questions for you, David. But what I will say is I am so impressed at, um, you know, just your resilience and trying to get that beautiful map to show. Because 
that was difficult. I know that was difficult, but it was worth it. I, I cannot tell you how many buses I nearly stepped in front of. <laughs> it was yeah. hopelessly frustrating. But but again, like that's I'm I'm one of the I, my brain loves puzzles. I love problem solving. So I spent the entire time hopelessly frustrated, really violently angry, and just masochistically <laughs> loving every moment of it. When I finally got that sucker up and running, I'm like, worth it. <laughs> yes. Absolutely. You did a great job. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, we have one more presenter, last but never least, Hayden. Take it away. Hey, everyone. My name is Hayden Metz. Uh, from a young age, I've always been interested in technology. Uh, I was a gamer growing up. Um, I would always open up my computer and start typing into the command prompt, thinking that I was doing some coding or hacking into my own computer. I was never really doing anything, but it definitely felt cool. Uh, throughout high school, I was an entrepreneur. I was always thinking of different ways that I could make a, make a buck to try to go and buy a, the latest video game. Um, one of the things that I did in high school was an entrepreneurship promotion plan. I took a 30-page paper to a DECA national convention and placed in the top 10. Uh, it, it was a real experience uh, going out there and doing all of that and presenting a, a big project in front of a lot of people. Um, but out of high school, I kind of fell into the standard after high school job. I did some food service and then delivered pizzas. I worked on a farm. Uh, eventually, I wanted to move away from my hometown. So I moved to Columbia, Missouri and ended up locating infrastructure for a construction company. I uh, got into some leasing and then eventually ended up managing a golf course. And at the golf course, uh, when I got there, we were averaging five rounds a day. And when I left there, we had a whole new fleet of golf carts that I had oversaw like the purchase of. and. Uh, we were averaging 50 to 60 rounds a day. So I felt like, you know, I really did my job there and I didn't really feel fulfilled within myself for what I wanted to do. So I kind of took a step back and decided that I wanted to go more career oriented and find something that I could really learn something new every day and continue and uh, never really get bored with. So I kind of tapped back into that youthful joy of typing into the command prompt and wanted to actually learn how to use it and uh, develop things and also take that entrepreneurship from high school and make products that could actually be viable and something that people would use. Um, so I did some independent study. I uh, learned some Ruby through a couple of the free boot camps online. And I did some HTML and CSS in preparation for Savvy Coders. I kind of had an issue with imposter syndrome, feeling like I wouldn't really be able to keep up once I got into the, the boot camp environment. But uh, eventually I, I got on the phone with Des and she told me that there was a cohort starting within the week. So I said, all right, let's just pull the trigger. I signed up for the, the boot camp, uh, and I'm really glad that I did. It put me in a position that was uncomfortable, but also really pushed me to learn more in three months than I have in five years. So it was a really good experience. Um, one of the requirements for uh, Savvy Coders was to build a single page application as a capstone to display our skills. And I really wanted to do something that was fun to me. And one of my hobbies is uh, streaming live on Twitch. And a lot of people don't really know what Twitch is. It's kind of like a YouTube for live streaming. Um, it started off for gaming and it's kind of evolved into this thing where there's uh, game shows hosted on there. Uh, Rolling Stones will have music concerts on there. Uh, and I think it's really gonna over, or over a long time probably take over YouTube. Um, YouTube, it takes a long time to record the videos, put them together, but with Twitch, you just press a button and you're live and you're streaming to thousands of people. Um, so let me show you what my capstone is. I'm going to move my zoom over here, show my screen. All right, just want to confirm we can see my VS to the left and my web and the website to the right. Um, so one of the things that we did with uh, within the cohort was jump straight into organizational tools. One of the ones that we used to organize our own projects was Trello. Uh, we used a Kanban style board to set up user stories and uh, cards for features that we wanted to implement. Um, so over here, I've got some uh, features that I still need to research and I plan to implement into my site because I do plan on launching this into something as a tool that people actually use. Um, so a couple of those things is an indicator for when the streamer is live and then an upvote and a downvote feature. 
And then in my backlog, I have my wireframes, a color scheme, and some, uh, some fonts. I had a couple of different ways that I may have wanted to lay out the website. And I ended up going for a very simple uh, three column approach to it. So uh, moving forward in the Kanban board, we had a development phase, a progress phase, and a testing phase. Um, some of the things that I've left in the te testing phase is the functionality of an SPA. Um, I still need to really grasp the, uh, the theory behind state and the, the statelessness of a single page application. And then I've also got all the features that I was able to uh, implement into my final capstone. Am I done? Another one of the organizational tools that we used was JIRA. Um, as a cohort, we had a bunch of different projects. So the way that we really structured our JIRA was to follow along with the, the coursework so that we made sure that we could remove the impediments for each other when it came to understanding the material. Um, so we have like a to-do section, a progress section, and a done section. Um, our definition of ready to move into the progress was uh, as long as the majority of the, the small pod or the, the scrum team that we had was feeling comfortable with it, we could move it into progress. And that also allowed us to see who wasn't necessarily feeling comfortable with it so we could help each other get comfortable with it. And then our definition of done was once everybody felt comfortable with it and we could move forward with the curriculum. We, uh, we all hosted our capstones um, on Netlify so that other people on the internet could interact with them and use them once we were done. So I just wanted to show that Netlify and here are all my deploys. You can see that I kind of went crazy and had all kinds of different iterations of my project moving throughout the, the capstone. And then I also wanted to show you all Twitch. Um, this is the website that I am interacting with and pulling all of my information from. Over here on the left, you can see a bunch of content creators. The little uh, number next to the red dot is how many people are watching them currently. So you can see there's some people who have 45,000 viewers and then it goes all the way down to, you know, the one viewer guy and 30 viewer guy, you know, so it's really a, uh, a place where a lot of people come together to create content and share the world. So this is my website. Um, I wanted to make a very lightweight dynamic site that was able to uh, hit any name in the Twitch website, bring their content, their chat, and show you what their profile picture looked like. Um, so to show you how it works, let me find someone who's live right now. We'll take this Buddha guy, and we'll type his name in here. And the page will automatically pull his profile picture, his chat, and then the top 10 clips that he has over the week. And this takes a little bit to load. But once they're loaded, you can see the, the name of the clip, uh, what they're playing at the time, the view count of the clip, and then you can actually play it. Just give it a second to load. So the clip is playing right now. I don't know if the audio will come through. But uh, one of the things as a Twitch streamer is you press that live button and you'll stream for a few hours at a time. And it really turns into a full-time job to go back through that and find segments from the, uh, from the video to edit into a YouTube video or to put on your Facebook or something like that. So uh, the way that clips works uh, is like the user doesn't actually make the clip. It's the audience that makes the clip. So as you're watching, you can press a button on the Twitch website and it'll generate a 30 second to 60 second video. And then those videos are actually, they tend to be the highlights of the stream because a user won't really clip it unless it's an interesting moment. So uh, all of these clips will have something going on in them at least, and you can download the clips and then edit them into a video and put them on YouTube so that you can really expand your audience. Um, in my nav bar, I've got uh, my home page, which will take you to just a blank page. Um, what I do plan on doing is adding some default values to have, and I might even make it point to my channel, you know, just to get that extra plug in there. But um, I, I'd like to add some default parameters so that this doesn't look so blank, um, but you can always search another user and repopulate the page. Um, I also have an about tab, which will take you to a personal portfolio of mine that I've been working on. This will act kind of as a uh, living document for me too. I uh, use as almost like a resume and to gather my experience and languages that I've learned. And then if we go back, I also have a, uh, a nav element that takes you to my LinkedIn so that you can connect with me. Moving through the website down on my footer, I've got my profile picture in the bottom left. It actually takes you to my website or my, uh, my Twitch stream, I should say. 
And uh, if you're lucky, maybe one day you'll be able to catch me live playing a video game. Who knows? And then I also have a couple of other elements down here. And then my name with a, a copyright logo, even though it's not really copyrighted. Maybe I'll just deter someone. I also wanted to show off that my site is, uh, it is mobile friendly. It's, uh, it's a responsive website, so it will change its elements and move them around depending on the size of the screen. And I also have a nav bar that comes out as a hamburger icon and uh, with a nice little transition effect when you click the, uh, when you click the buttons. Um, I also kind of wanted to show you what the alternative was to my website. Um, the only other alternative is this Clipper website. And in order to actually use it, you have to go to the Twitch website. You have to select a content creator. And then once you've selected the content creator, you have to wait for the page to load, go to the clips, find a clip that you want to download, And then once you have the clip, you can take the, the link and copy paste it into the site, press a button, and now you have, to have your download. But you only get one download and you have to go through that process every time that you, you want to generate a clip. So I really want to dial in and make it as easy as possible so you can grab all of the clips that are popular in the week and download them with one button. Moving into my code, um, I added some comments in here so that I can kind of keep track of the points I wanted to talk about. Um, here I am using uh, template literals to make it dynamic in the way that I only need one API endpoint to get all of that data. And I swap the, uh, the query inside of that API endpoint using a template literal, and uh, it actually looks at the, the URL. So whenever I press my submit button, it'll, it'll throw the username into the URL, and this tells it where to look inside the URL to grab that name. Moving through here, I used abstraction, which is a... Uh, a pillar of object-oriented programming to grab the, uh, the full JSON payload and pull it down into the actual bit that I needed to use. So here I'm just declaring my result as uh, the going into the object and pulling out the clips. And then also one of the major impediments that I came across um, in the development of this page was the download feature. For some reason, I, uh, I put the download feature towards the end thinking that, oh, it'll just be easy, throw in a download method and it'll be great. And then I found out the API doesn't actually give you the MP4 to download it from. So after doing a bunch of research, I found out that you can actually just take the JPEG identifier and replace it with MP4, and it's just as easy as that. And you you get the you get the downloaded clip. Uh, so that's what I've been working on over the last three months, and I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody's got them. Does anybody have any questions for Hayden? Does everyone know what Twitch is? Because I did not, and he had to explain it to me. First but time I've ever heard of it. Right, but what a cool thing. Absolutely. It was a great presentation, Hayden. Thank you. Okay, well, that was our final presentation for the evening. I have